Hi guys and welcome to my Diana Romanovska family law channel. My name is Diana and today I would like to talk about spousal support. Just a quick news uh, that I'm really excited about. I was certified as a family law specialist. Just keep in mind, whatever I'm going to tell you today is not about giving legal advice. It's my understanding of family law. And let's get right into it. So spousal support is something that court awards not automatically, but if you file so-called request for order. Spousal support is based on the length of the marriage. So for example, if the couple was married less than 10 years, then the, the spousal support length is considered based on the length of marriage. So less than 10 years is considered short-term marriage. More than 10 years is long-term marriage. So if the marriage was less than 10 years, then the spousal support is for the half of the length of the marriage, which would mean for five years. And then if the marriage was over 10 years, then the spousal support is going to be indefinitely. So now let's say you have date of marriage, which is here, and you have date of separation, which is here, and the marriage is eight years, and we establish that it's a short-term marriage, and the length of spousal support would be four years. Then one spouse goes and files for divorce and gets a case number, then the petition needs to be served, and so that way the court has jurisdiction. So remember we have eight years, date of marriage, date of separation, that's the time frame you decide what amount of years you have been married. Not when you filed, but when the date of separation is actually um, there. And many people ask me, what is date of separation? Date of separation has been appealed and talked about many, many times, but the point is date of separation if one spouse decides, one spouse, not two, one spouse decides, I don't want to come back, this marriage is no no longer reconcilable, I, um, moving, I'm moving out, however recently moving out is not the, the factor anymore, but the totality of circumstances is that one spouse for sure decides to not want to come back to the marriage and marriage is not resumed. So we established that a marriage date of separation, eight years. We know that the court has jurisdiction because the petition for divorce has been served. We have a case. So then time passes and the spouse who needs supports needs to file request for order, or a phone for spousal support. And then the hearing is given about a month in advance or something like that. And so during the time when the divorce is pending, and many people ask me, well, how long do you think my divorce is going to be pending? It depends on the case. If it's uncontested case, it's probably about six months on average. If it's contested case, it can be on average at least nine months, and sometimes it's even longer. When divorce is pending, which starts with the date of filing and serving, and the whole proceeding of asking for spouse support and property division and child support. So during that proceeding, divorce is pending. And it might end up in trial and either temporary spouse support can be, uh, the judge can award temporary spouse support until the divorce is final or until the judge determines the number at the trial, actual trial date. And then permanent support is after divorce is final or after the judge decided in, in trial what, what the amount and length is going to be. And that can be in, the, in our case if it's eight years marriage and divorce was 12 months, then we're moving on to permanent support which would be remaining of three years. And the, one of the questions that comes up most of the time is what is the number? How much in spousal support would I pay? There are two types of calculations. One is based on percentage of income. That was, let's look at, let's say, pay steps and if the party's self-employed schedule C in tax returns. Sometimes um, the court would look at two last years of tax returns if it's in self-employment situation. And then the court calculates it based on this uh, DISA master calculator. Well, the hell is DISA master calculator? Because it's probably 
um, somewhat complex formula? Well, somewhat. If um, this master calculator is based on on California law and it says that spousal support is temporary spouse support is awarded in the amount of 40% of net income of the paying party and in that 40% if the net paying party is um, if the net income of the paying party already has to be deducted child support so let's say we don't have children in our case so it would be 40% of net income of the paying party and if the receiving party has zero income then here we have our number 40 percent if the receiving party has income then we're looking at 40 percent of the net income of the paying party minus 50 percent of the net income of the receiving party that's the formula what is the formula for permanent support Permanent support formula is depending on so-called 4320 factors. 4320 is a family code section. You can look it up on Google. It has 20 factors, I believe. A very long list. But to sum it up, sum it up for, let's say, in three, three factors, it would be standard of living during the marriage, need of the receiving party, and ability to pay of the paying party. So give you an extreme example. Let's say we established this semester calculator. The party was married eight years and the paying party was during the marriage earning about $100,000 and the receiving party was earning zero. And then after the separation, after the date of separation, the paying party started to receive a million dollar in income. I don't know why, just Let's assume for these purposes of uh, this conversation. Um, for the, perp for the, the calculation of this semester, the million dollar of income would go into consideration, but not for permanent, because why? We established that during the marriage, and during the five, eight years, they, he or she has been earning only $100,000. So that means that standard of living was never a million dollars. So therefore, this number is going to be way lower than this number. If you ask me, usually this type of example is very extreme. Usually it's quite similar numbers in um, regular cases and usual cases. Um, I hope I don't miss anything today. So that was the summary of uh, California law. If you have any questions, I'm going to list my email below. Feel free to set up an appointment with me if you would like and ask questions or just shoot me an email or give me a call. I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye.